preferring sys v init under normal circumstances the, after the kernel's done loading and initializing various system components it attempts to load a program called init which will finalize the system boot process the program found on most linux systems is called system v init and that's the program going to install on our lf system lfs system so what we need to do here um, before we start building stuff is to actually fetch the files so what i'm going to do is go to uh, lfs i'm going to create a sources directory uh, sorry not there and copy everything into this directory a bit like we do with uh, the current linux from scratch i'm then going to go to my um, web server uh, probably don't need that but never mind fs-1.0 right so yeah this this error all it is is this um, uh, I guess it's bash presumably I don't know um, but it can't deal with 256 colors in the terminal so what we need to do is export and maybe this is something I should put into the profile so that it gets oops gets set automatically is to export a term as just simple x term rather than um, x term 256 color so if I source that so just check LFS is still set if I now echo term you can see it's set to X term, so that's good. So if I rerun that links command, you can see it now works. Okay, so what I need to do is go to packages um, and basically just fetch all of these, um, which might take some time. Might have been easier if I got hold of wget. Um, I guess what I could do actually is uh, what I'll do is load up a new tab um, and just keep that reserved. To download the packages as we use them, that's probably the best way. So now I need to do telnet p233. So I'll go back to LFS slash sources and can I recall that links command? No. So the first one I need to get hold of is sysphere init, which is not there. It's one of the ones from Sue's. In fact, it might just be easy for me to download all these, but I'll do that offline. It's probably the best thing to do, but I can show you doing this one now. So all I need to do is do D here to download. It downloads it, press enter to save it to disk. It asks for a file name. I'll just take what the default is and that's done. And as it says, press the left arrow to go back. Let's go back to this tab. Do a listing and there's the file downloaded from the local server. So normally I do this command to extract files because tar is capable of interpreting various archive formats but this tar is so old it's unable to do that so we have to do it another way around. Do zcat which takes the zip file and cat it uncompresses it and then sends it sends out the uncompressed stream 
to stand it out but we want to pipe that through uh, into tar so just do tar minus x v x to extract v to make it verbose uh, and obviously give it a file name so that's the full command and you can see sysv in it has been extracted now so we can now change into the directory and as it says here we unpack the sysv in it archive we've done now go to the source directory and these instructions can be a little bit difficult to read it looks like that source is in the same font as the general text other times as italics sometimes it's completely different font so you have to read it carefully uh, to see what you're dealing with now it says edit the make file file so let's do fire make file somewhere in this file but before the rule all put this variable root and again there's spelling mistakes and this is where you can see that the t and the space have been interchanged so it should say put this variable root equal dollar lfs so somewhere in the file but before the all rule so likely place looks like here would be good so we put in root equals dollar lfs and proceed um, now i'm not sure if dollar lfs will be interpreted by the script it probably will be but just to be sure i'm going to explicitly put in um, in fact i think this should be the dev Uh, dev slash hda6 and then proceed every dev on the last four lines by this in this file by dollar root so let's have a look at that so after applying dollar root to parts of the last four lines they should look like this so the first one's the if command Um, right, I didn't make a note of what this should actually be now after the prime root. We'll put this variable root equal dollar LFS. Right, well, we definitely need to put dollar root in here. So dollar open bracket root in capitals so let's copy that and it needs to proceed this dev here this one here and that one there now the fact that this has got rm and make nod indicates that this shouldn't be a dev it should be the file system so let's go back so that probably should be mnt lfs so let's save that now it tells us to compile the package by running make ld flags equals static So let's just look at LFS. Yeah, there is a dev directory there. So that dev directory is this one here. 
and so then root is the root of the LFS system. So what I did is correct. So that should be um, just update my notes here slash MNT slash LFS. Okay, so now we can install this. Yes, that's right. That's why we put the root in here is to install it at this root position. So um, when we do this install, it shouldn't be overwriting the system. We can double check that. You can see it's written to MNT LFS S bin there. Um, all these files, MNT LFS user bin. So yes, that's, that's why that is tweaked or um, adjusted to make sure that um, these files are not installed on the SUSE system, but they're actually installed into the MNTLFS system. So that's that done. Now we need to configure it. So it says create a file called init tab in the etc. So insert, we can just copy this and it's a basic init tab. Save that and we can view that just to make sure that is okay. There it is. Now we need to copy the password and group files. As you can see from the init tab file, when we boot the system, and it will start the SU login program. So that's this bit here. Uh, actually, it's probably that bit there. And SU login will ask you for root's password. This means we need to have at least a password file present on the LFS system. We'll use password and group files for the, from the current running Linux system. Since the passwords are encoded, it's just easy to copy the already present file and use that instead of retyping the encoded password. Mistakes are easily made and this way we can avoid extra hassle afterwards. Now I found this didn't work and it wasn't even necessary to type in the password. Um, but we'll copy this anyway. And I think the reason is because Shadow is probably active, there's no information here saying about copying the Shadow file. So I think that's why the password part of it doesn't work. But let's copy the files it mentions here. So we'll do cp uh, etc password and etc group we'll put them into dollar lfs etc and let's use the minus v so we can see what's happening so they've been copied into the correct place then it says to modify the dollar lfs etc password file and remove every line except for the line for the user root so let's do that so root's always the first one, so we'll just press lots of D's to remove the remainder. And save that. And then we do likewise for the group password. Again, root's at the top, so we we'll just delete all the others. That's that done. Now installing a root shell. When SU login asks you for root password and you're entered a password, a shell needs to be started. Usually this is the bash shell. Since there are no libraries installed yet, we need to link bash statically just like we did with sysv init. So unpack the bash archive. So that's the next one we need to download. And that's one that's taken directly from SUSE. I couldn't find a newer version uh, prior to the December date. So just use that one. Press D to download. Press enter to save it. Press enter to accept the default file name. And left arrow to go back. Back to the original tab. Uh, we can tidy this up now because we've done with this, this V init for now. 
and we should see that we've got a bash there now as well. So once again, Zcat bash, pipe it into tar minus XV, and then change into the bash directory. So configure the package by running configure enable static link. Okay, all these commands assume that configure is in the current path. Um, I do remember at a time it was commonplace to add the current directory to the path so that you could just run any file in the current directory without having to prefix the dot forward slash. Um, and then it became obvious that that probably wasn't a good idea to um, allow that sort of access. So um, maybe uh, Jared Beekman's machine had that configuration, but I won't set that up myself. I'll just prefix, I'll try to remember to prefix each command with a dot and forward slash. Okay, that's configured, so we can build it by running make. I think this takes a few minutes. Let's time it and see for future. Okay, so that's compiled, Take, took a couple of minutes. And what we need to do now is to copy the binary bash to LFS bin. So if we look at this, 
what we've done, we've built a static version of Bash, which explains why it's so big. It's um, two megabytes, which is quite a big size, especially considering this is a very old version of Bash. And that's because there's no shared libraries that this file relies on. It's got everything it needs contained in that one binary. So let's copy Bash to LFS bin. Let's use the minus V again so we can see what's going on. And then it says to create a symbolic link. That links LFS bin SH. Oh yeah, so this is, gives us uh, an SS. Uh, sorry, an SH uh, that a lot of scripts use. So I'll use ln minus sv uh, bash dollar uh, LFS forward slash bin forward slash SH. So we're creating a link from the bash binary which is in LFS bin, and we're going to give it the name SH. And they are create symbolic link SH to bash. So we can look at that. And you can see that's the only binary we've got in there. Uh, there's no other binaries installed, uh, apart from the init package, which will probably be under S bin. There's those few binaries there um, and that's all we need to do so I can tidy that up now remove bash um, one thing I will do just remembered is for the password uh, sorry not that one the LFS password file um, I found that I couldn't log on when it came to the time where you could actually put your password in. Um, it wouldn't accept the password. And I think, like I say, it's because the shadow files aren't copied across. So what I did to get around that, rather than trying to work out which are the actual shadow files I need, which, if you look at ETC, I probably, well, it looks like it's those two. Well, we haven't got a shadow group as far as I know that's been set up in the new system anyway, so that might break. Um, rather than mess around with shadow, uh, what I decided to do was to remove this X here, which is, that re X represents the fact that the password is encrypted. Um, I even tried changing that to something sensible, like, you know, Fred or something, just a clear text. It didn't work either. Um, so what I decided to do is just to remove it, and it does mean it's got the side effect that we can log on to root without having to put the password in, so um, it just makes things a little bit easier anyway, so it's probably a, a better option. Um, so that's... That um, after you've completed the section, we can test the system to see if we can log into it. So, bear in mind what we've done. All we've done is we've compiled two programs. We've compiled Bash, which is obviously a, a shell, an environment where we can do some stuff, and we've installed an init program to um, actually start the system after the kernel was loaded. So, the kernel looks for an init program, uh, that program runs, and then init we'll look for um, a shell to run as well. So that's all we've installed. The only other thing we've got in the new system is a kernel, and even that's not on the um, actual uh, partition, because um, we're sharing the boot partition. It's using the SUSE 6.1 partition. So you can see how this is already quite interesting to build this. We can see straight away what is the minimum to get a Linux system up and running with a term, a, you know, a command prompt. It's a kernel to set the hardware up, init system to link the kernel to the shell that we're going to run, and the shell itself. So there's basically three subsystems that are all required to get the system going, and we will be able to boot into it and log, log into it. 
Um, so it's, yeah, it's just worth taking note and considering that, that how basic the system is, and yet we can still achieve something. Um, it says you will get errors and so on. Um, so I think probably the best thing to do is for me to stop this video and I'll get the um, link up to the actual uh, computer screen and we can see that part working next before we carry on. Okay, so here I am at the terminal again, uh, just starting it up. So what we've got to do this time is to make sure that we boot into LFS 1.0 and not SUS um, 6.1. So what we'll do is press tab here and we'll see all the boot options. And you can see there is LFS 1.0, which we added. So let's try and boot from it, see if it's all working. So there's the kernel loading, and if you remember, that's the kernel that SUS 6.1 installed. It's not a kernel we've created. And as you can see, there's the errors that are mentioned in the manual that cannot execute a couple of startup files that it's looking for. And it's asked us for the root password for maintenance. So as I said, I've just set the root password to nothing, so I can just press enter there, which I believe you could do anyway, uh, despite what the password was but you can see we booted into bash 2.02 .02. um, certain things won't work because they're not built into bash so for example ls is not there um, I can't think of a command that is built in off offhand um, well there's the programs that are installed on the system Let's try that message one. Not sure. Message is no, I presume that means. Um, yeah, I can't think of any intrinsic commands now that are built into Bash. Uh, but anyway, you can see we've got a system that's working. It's booted correctly. We've got a Bash prompt. Um, there's just not a lot we can do because what you see on the screen is literally all the programs that there are and even they won't work. Um, properly as, as as you saw in the um, book it mentioned that if we try to do shutdown it will respond with a message saying um, what it can't find or why it's not working and it just basically says you don't exist go away so it's refusing to um, execute the command because the system's not configured in the correct way so as it said in the book all we can do from this point is to reboot with the F flag to force it um, and reboot back into SU6 and carry on. So I'll do that now. And you can see this is why the operating system was set up um, as read only because obviously we're not shutting down cleanly, it's just um, restarting effectively.